folks, my next guest is an actor who starred in House of Cards, Marvel's Luke Cage, and the Hunger Games movies. His latest film is Moonlight. Please welcome Mahershala Ali. Man. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty you know, darn good. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, you are uh, a really well-respected actor. I, I really respect your work, but actors can do that for years and years and years without having the moment, hmm. you know? Yeah. It seems like you're enjoying that right now. You got, you got, you got nominated for House of Cards this year. You got the movie Moonlight. Uh, you were in Luke Cage, Power Man. Does this time for you feel any different, or is it just like more of the same? And all that attention uh, is just sort of outside your business. Yeah, it it definitely feels different. I uh, each year I, I did four seasons of House of Cards, and um, uh, we we'd hit the hiatus, and then the show would come out, and then there would be this bump in activity where I would get calls and scripts and whatnot. But it was then, all come out at once too. Yeah, yeah, and then so I wasn't really able to capitalize on those opportunities because I was going right back into the next season of the show. So. Mm -hmm. Finally, after I left the show, uh, this last season, my schedule opened up and different opportunities came my way, and I've been able to take advantage of those. Now, not only was uh, House of Cards uh, a streaming show, but also Marvel's Luke Cage. Yeah. Um, did you have any... I mean, just a few years ago, saying that something was only online would have been a weird thing to say. Were you sold right away on the idea of, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go into a show that's only available by streaming Explain this to me again. It, it would have been equivalent to someone saying, we're going to do a series, and you're going to go pick up the DVD at Blockbuster to watch the series. It was just a strange thing to do. And I remember after booking the show and shooting it, I was up in the Bay Area hanging out with my grandmother, and she always likes to know what it is I'm doing. She has to write it down. She's telling people, calling people. So I, one day I hear on the phone, yeah, he's going to be on that show that you got to watch in the computer. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, I, I was a little, I was like, I don't know how this show's gonna do, but, uh, but yeah. Did she watch it? Yeah, uh, yeah she watched it. Yeah. yeah. Did she yeah. call She has to go over to, like, my aunt's house oh, to watch okay. it, because, you right. know, yeah. she, she's not uh, all that technologically hip, but, uh. Well, yeah. you've got a new movie, uh, Moonlight. Um, tell people the movie is about and, mm -hmm. and the role that you play, please. Wow, it's about a young man, and it takes place in three stages. Uh, he's nine, and then uh, I think 16, and then like 26. And it's a real kind of coming of age story, self discovery, someone grappling with coming to terms uh, with his sexuality and, and the crucible of that. Uh, it, it's, it's a really challenging story, but it's, it's full of characters that we haven't really quite seen before. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful film. You play uh, a character named Juan. Yes. Who is he? He's an Afro-Cuban um, living in Liberty City, Miami. Uh, he's a drug dealer. Um, and, but what I think really attracted me to this part was here it is, somebody who has just some really wonderful attributes, um, and, he's, and those things are highlighted in this script. So often when we see drug dealers or someone dealing in a criminal element, their part in this in the story is just really to to kind of reinforce that thing. So it's a one dimensional. It's a portrayal. one dimensional thing, yeah. and in this, you really get into into these other parts of this person and his personality. Did and you have any hesitancy about playing a drug dealer who's also very inspirational? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's an inspirational figure. The drug dealer. He's, a, he's a mentor yes. to this. He's, he's a mentor to this young man. You know, if anything, I think that drew me to it because you know I've. I've grown up around or was in close proximity to people who, who that was a compartmentalized part of their life, but they were still fairly good people and, and good fathers. And, but it gets into people's opportunities, and that's how people sometimes end up going that route and end up selling drugs because, you know, they, they, they weren't able to get the type of education that, that I was perhaps fortunate enough to get. Well, know? we have a, a clip here. It's your character, uh, Juan. And he's, he's mentoring, what's the young man's name? Uh, uh, Chiron. Chiron. Yeah. And um, uh, this is him talking to him uh, about life. Yeah. Jim? This one time, I run by this old, this old lady.
lady. I was running, hollering, cutting a fool, boy. This old lady, she stopped me. She said, running around, catching a boy that light. In moonlight, black boys look blue. You blue. That's why I gonna call you. Blue. Say your name, Blue. <laughs> nah. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you gonna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. Talking about deciding who you want to be, yeah. deciding on who you are and who you want to be, um, you are an African-American Muslim. Yes. Uh, how does that feel to be an African-American Muslim uh, today as opposed to it felt a week ago? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was just filling in the clear from 9-11. So, <laughs> you know, it took a long time to get comfortable, you know? It was a very difficult time. Um, cause look, I've, I converted to Islam in like 99 or 2000 and then, you know, 9-11 happened. So it was a really difficult time. And then now, you know, with someone who has kind of tried to reinforce this division, it, it's challenging because look, being a, being an African American first and then being a Muslim, like those are two groups of people who feel misunderstood and they feel like people who have been trying to fight to be accurately represented and, 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 and seen as, as full human beings and as equal and as, as people with something to offer as well. And so it's a, it's a very challenging time, but you know, I, I believe and I have hope and there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of good work and, uh, and uh, yeah, so. All right. Fingers crossed moving forward. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Moonlight is in theaters now. Mahershala Ali, everybody. We'll be right back with comedian Chris Gethard. Stick around.